Justin asked me, what is it that prevents him from going faster? Now, here are my 50 cents. The main problem, and Justin, you sent me two footages. Uh, one is low steady state, one is higher steady state. There is no difference. Um, the patterns are the same. Now, if you look at this, guys, you see at the catch, <clears throat> there's a bit of a extra bend forward. Okay, this could be a reason. But there's one main element missing, and it is, it's what I call the turbo. It's basically your upper body um, that, is, that is not creating extra drive. So in order to do this, you've got to use your upper body and you've got to bring it in position first. The idea, and what I want to have ideally, is an upper body that is not super soft and hunched, but an upper body that is stable. I don't mean you should you should sit like you know you just you just swallow the piece of cupboard, but you should have a certain stability, and that stability comes from all the way from the hip until to the main chest bones, and shoulders being somewhat flexible. And Justin, I think this is the reason why you're not um, accelerating this this flywheel right there as much as you could. As usual, problem started to finish. First up, that position right there. You see that your chin is pretty close to your chest. I'm not I'm not advocating you should be like this, but it's a good symptom that your back is not creating a lot of stability. What to check for this position is that your feet are still very well connected to the foot stretchers and that you feel this connection in your chest bone right there or in the lower lower abs this is where you feel a nice push from your lower abs onto your feet if you don't feel this happening there is not enough connection there how to create that change body position and tension namely bring the chest out a bit more try to sit wide wide elbows so not so narrow your elbows are pretty narrow you see these guys uh, make sure your elbows are pretty wide and make yourself heavy and wide. S next thing, uh, once you are in this position, you see that here your lower your lower trunk is, is a bit hunched. Shouldn't be the case. The lower trunk is the one that should be that should be getting the most most of your attention. So chest bone supports and bring the lower lower um, spine. A bit into almost hollow position. The thing is, you will never have a hollow, a hollow back on your. It is impossible. This will be the healthiest thing to do, but it's simply unrealistic. And I think, Justin, you need to focus way more on core stability. This is probably your weakest link right there. First thing here, you see, probably already saw it. Everybody who knows my video analysis will know what's what's to come now. Um, you're lacking flexibility, Justin. You're not flexible enough. You see that your knees break before your hands have even passed your knees. Don't do that. Um, especially on the erg where leverage is so important. Make sure that your knees hold just a little longer until at least your lower section of the spine of the trunk has moved forward. This is important. You should do this. Um, because this is the thing that's going to drive the rest later on um, during, during the drive time. So bring your lower section of the trunk forward because right now you're sitting on a back part of your butt and you should sit on the front edge of the seat not on the rear edge of the seat that's just a nice indicator it's a good symptom make sure you do this here you see i'm not changing my upper part of the trunk i'm just changing my lower part of the trunk i i more or less sit on the front edge of the seat not all the way but just a tendency that's enough you should when you move forward always check your position double check your position and load more the front part of the seat more you still are probably centered on the seat but your lower spine your pelvis it all rolls forward and this is what we need to achieve so the reason why you're not making as much speed as you could is because you only use your legs you don't use your main transfer element which is the upper body now you feel like hey i, I cannot really move forward with my trunk because your hip is in the way roll forward bring your pelvis up and then you can bring your chest bone out and you don't have to do this every catch exactly this this by itself is it's not a problem it is the symptom of a much greater problem which i just described okay and now the drive time is just a result of the re of the preparation as you drive with your legs now, which are massive, you overload your back. Your back's too weak and your back is not well positioned. This is what I want. Pretty much four straight lines. 
All right. And this is what it is. Straight line is the same. Shoulder is nice and relaxed. That's good. But here we have this. There. Another turning point. Another turning point. Another turning point. Another turning point. Another one. And then we have this one. Now, as the blue lines here in the back, they signify the most important transfer element because you want to transfer force from the handles onto the feet. Now, if this part here is simply not positioned well enough, you can be, um, you know, strong as a horse, it will not be sufficient. And more leg power will not get the job done. What you need to do is make sure that you position your back a bit more. You don't need to sit all the way upright straight because this relaxed shoulder is good. But from this point on right there, you should make sure that your back is more or less stable. So right here, where this where this point is, this is where your hip should be. Exactly right there. Yeah. Let me draw a circle, this is possible. Nice circle. This is where your hip should be, where my blue circle is right now. So your seat is too far up front. The solution is not to leave your seat way way back too far the solution is to bring the seat exactly to the same point it is right now but with a more upright lower back and then you also have more reach without needing to overextend your shoulders here so solution the main solution is not to leave the seat farther back and still have a round back the main solution is here at the finish to prepare well now your main question was why is it that i'm not as fast as I could be because now your upper body should be like a whip but it isn't it is not a whip you have this massive upper body and you can't really use it that's a pity that's a pity I'm pretty sure if you change your technique at first it will become a bit slower because your muscles need to learn the new motion new muscle memory needs to build but give it two months um, three months also dedicated core training I think you can easily knock off 10 seconds your 2k simply because you position your body in a better way I'm, pr I'm pretty sure about this i'm gonna play that video a bit longer justin i hope this helps you i'm gonna start a discussion about this in the newly founded uh indoor rowing facebook group i made a facebook group dedicated only to indoor rowing and if you want to send me footage for video analysis of indoor rowing please post it in the indoor rowing facebook group i'm gonna put a link right in the description of this video i hope you liked it i hope this was interesting if you did give me a thumbs up share the video helps me to grow the channel and subscribe if you haven't already and i hope to see you next time have a good day and i'm looking forward to see you all soon Bye bye